what is good guys it's ray j back with another video and this one i'm going to be breaking down what's going on with tesla spy and video the qqq and a couple of other tickers and break down what's happening with the economic data coming out at 10 a.m that's going to cause a very very big move and what the news is saying about the markets thus far but before i break anything down all this information before i get into any more details let me just mention a couple of things i'm firstly not a financial planner so take nothing i say as financial advice and also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to six free stocks. Put in $500 and you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you put in $25,000, you're guaranteed 70 free stocks with 12 months of level two data. The offer ends in two weeks. Check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down why the market's about to make a huge move. So, Today is Tuesday, December 5th. At the time I'm recording this, it's the pre-market. Uh, that may be the reason why my, my voice may sound kind of muffled and quiet, but I'm just going to still make this work. Uh, at 9.45 a.m., or 15 minutes after the market opens, we have the S&P Global Composite coming out. Uh, we have some PMI data for our services section that could cause a small move in the markets, but the real move is going to come at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 30 minutes after market open because we have lots of big data coming out. We have the ISM services PMI. We have the massive jobs numbers coming out. So the job openings for October are going to be coming out. We want this to be between 9.3 9.4 million. Then we have more services data and then we have the job quits data all coming out. If the data is decent, this could technically cause the market to bounce. So look at where the forecasts happen to be for aligned with them. If the data is like showing signs of more contraction, the jobs numbers are not too strong and et cetera, this could add to the recessionary fears and cause the market to slow down. So either way, it is possible the market will make a big move in either direction. So you want to be prepared just to be safe. Now, when it comes to other pieces of news affecting the markets, uh, you know, the news is saying that the stock market is kind of pausing from this rally. Uh, it's been rallying quite a bit. It's taking a break. And there's a good chance that that could be true. But we have to see how this data, you know, continues to affect the markets. Uh, we have to see if we can break some key supports because so far, some stocks are starting to break some critical supports. Other ones are still holding up. And I'll show you in just a few minutes. Uh, GitLab jumped 14% after it had its earnings coming out, which impressed investors. Uh, we're seeing more companies out there, such as uh, Twilio has come out and said that's going to lay off 5% of its workforce. Even Spotify did the same thing. And the rating agency's Moody's has downgraded its outlook in China's government credit ratings to negative from stable. That's big news for them. This is going to affect the debts in the U.S. So this being said, this is bad news, at least for the global economy, especially for the U.S. That's part of why the U.S. is dropping a bit. And Nokia is also dropping right here. You guys can see this. I had lost out on a major deal with the U.S. giant AT&T. And this is once again going to switch with another rival instead. So that's some bad news for Nokia. Uh, that's it for the main pieces of news affecting the markets. For earnings, don't forget we have Neo, AutoZone for today, and just a few more retailers. And that's pretty much it for the news. So we're going to start off with SPY, then we'll talk about Tesla and the others. What is going on with the charts during the pre-market? We dropped a little bit more, but as of right now, we're still holding on to support at this orange trend line. And if you want to turn bearish, you want to see this thing basically lose 454. If we lose that, we're going to turn a lot more bearish. And this thing could start sinking, right? But so far, we're still holding our support. It's still holding. So we'll see what happens. Now, with the data coming out at 10 o'clock a.m., although SPY is dropping right now, we have to be open-minded just to be safe. If we're bearish, let's just say the data comes out, we need to not only lose this trend line now, but lose this low. It's 454 area. That's going to be the bearish case, and we could be looking for a move back down to 452 very soon. We could even drop lower if we're bearish after the data is released. But there's always the possibility they're going to try to trick investors, and SPY is going to bounce off the trend line, and we get a crazy move to the upside. Uh, we could try to make our way back up towards 458. And if it manages to break that, this resistance here, if this breaks, we could try to fill the gap around 459 and then reject. And then, you know, later on, we could see this thing just come down. Just for example, right? There could be a final pump coming to fill the gap before we come down. Uh, if we get above 457.5 to 458, watch for the gap fill in the 459 area before a rejection. 
if we just break the trend line immediately, we're going to turn bearish and 454 is going to be our next target. If that fails us, 452, 452 is basically next. So that's what's going to likely come. Look for the big move. I'm not going to like trade much until after I see the data come out. I'll see if the market bounces or not. I'm going to be open-minded to anything just to be safe, okay? We look bearish from a technical standpoint. But we haven't broken key support yet. So just wait and see just to be safe. Will the data launch the market back up to fill the gap and then we get a rejection later? Or, or will we just break our trend line from the beginning and just start you know, sinking immediately. I don't know, guys. We'll just have to wait and see. So wait for the data first, and we'll see what the move is. I'm just trying to be as open-minded as possible because there's lots of trickery in this market. For Tesla, we're starting to break our key support. I'm going to go back to the daily time frame. Right, we have our daily right here, and if you look at Tesla, technically it hasn't broken yet on the daily trend line, but on the hourly and the other ones, it is technically losing it. So. If we're bullish on Tesla, we get a bounce thanks to the data. We're going to be looking at Tesla trying to make its way back up to 240 and bouncing off this trend line like this if we get a bounce after all this data comes out. If we fail, and let's just say that Tesla can't break 240 to 242, Tesla continues to collapse, you want to see Tesla lose not only 233, but you want to see it get back down to 230 and just kind of like struggle there. Because if we lose 230, we have this gap to fill down here around 223 on Tesla. That's going to be the bearish case. Watch and see if this thing ends up getting close to 230. And if we lose it, we're going to turn a lot more bearish. Or do we bounce off the trend line in a surprise move back to 242 or so? Now, I wish I could predict it, but it all depends on the data. So we'll just have to wait and see. On the QQQ, we also have a gap above. Uh, we'll be watching this. The daily candlestick technically looks a little bullish. So will the QQQ try to push back up towards, you know, this 390 area, maybe 388 to 390 after the data comes out and then reject later? Or will the QQQ just continue to sell off? We're technically below uh, 385, which is a little sign of weakness. But don't forget, we have this support right here around 383.75. If we lose 383.75, there's going to likely be a move to the downside coming. We could get very close to 380, if not 378, to fill this gap. So we're going to be watching to see if there's a rejection. Do we lose this trend line of support at 383.75, or do we get some kind of balance first before we end up losing it? So in my opinion, these are actually equally likely. I can't predict what this data will cause. So if the QQQ gets back above 386.5, Watch to try to push up to 388. If it gets above that, it could get closer to 390 and then reject. Or it might just start sinking down immediately. If we lose 383.75, we're going to be sinking lower quite quickly. So we'll be watching that very carefully. On NVIDIA, this thing is currently at 452. And we're actually getting very tight on the stock. We're still really, really tight. I would say that NVIDIA is very simple. If we get some kind of like bullish move after all the data is released, watch NVIDIA try to make its way back up towards four. First off, we have 457.5. Then we have it 459 coming next. 459 is going to come back if we get a bullish move after all the data is released. If we're bearish, watch critical support at 450. If we lose that, we're going to be heading back down to 444, if not 440 at least for now. Now we could even drop lower later on, but for now we're just gonna be watching the next levels. Will Nvidia sink down to 444 or are we about to come back up to 459? The data will determine that once it comes out. For Apple stock, Apple's looking kind of flat right now. It's actually a little bit red. I'm sorry, I think it's actually just flat at 190 right now. So Apple is showing some life. If we get some bullish data, Apple could push back up towards 191. Uh, right where our trend line is. If we're bullish, if it tries to break that 191.5 is next. Uh, see if we could get back to 191 if we're bullish. If we're bearish, you want to see it sink back down to 189 flats. If we lose that, then 188.5 is next, followed by these lower levels. And we could see Apple start sinking to much lower levels after that. So it all depends on the data. If we're bearish, watch it lose 189. If we're bullish, you want to see it get above 190.5, then eventually 191 plus. It all depends on what's announced and what the reaction is. Apple could go either way. 
Will we get like a pop and then a rejection here and come back down? Or will we just reject straight from here? It all depends on the data and such. So we'll just be very patient, guys. Hopefully this video was helpful. Thank you for listening. Get ready. Get ready for a big move at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 30 minutes after market open. I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you and peace out.